Hello there. Welcome to the March 8th, 2024 edition of The Producer Show. We're coming at you on a Friday after a, I don't want to call it a strange week. It was, it it was, was a week for it sure. Was, it was definitely a week. <laughs> it was, ah, it's like, it's one of the most unique weeks, I would say, in show history, just from everything going on. Uh, the longest stream the show show's ever done, continuous stream from nine o'clock. People forget that Kirk started the show early on Monday because he was trying to catch you late. Uh, so he could kick it out. So we actually started earlier than people we normally do. Um, nine until like 10 o'clock on fucking Tuesday night. Yeah. So it was one of the one of the more wildest streams uh, weeks in show history. Uh, starting off, it was supposed to be Steve was supposed to come in Monday. Then they switched to Tuesday. And then, sure, I mean, I, I, I would agree with that. Kirk that like if Steve came in on Tuesday – and trying to do just a normal show in the midst of this happening, it would have been impossible. Like, Steve really wouldn't have known what is going on. Steve also, like, would have pretended he knew baseball. Like, Steve... He already was. He he was replying uh, to tweets saying, like, oh, I'm, I'm not coming in because I'm disgusted about Coleman not knowing this or whatever. And, and like, I doubt Steve would have known. Jim oh, Coleman. Steve, Steve 100% would not have yeah. known that. Uh, this is a guy who, I mean, uh, are you familiar with the singer Pat Benatar? Uh, yes, of uh, Heart, I think it is. Nope. Uh, but Pat Benatar. Uh, yep. Uh, but Pat Benatar. One time there was a there was a clip on the show where they're talking about Pat Benatar, and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, there's some guy named Pat Benatar on here. Oh. Um. So so it's it was just it was just an incredible stream. I think it was the right choice to push Steve off uh, until next week. Unfortunately, um, the downfall of the stream is that it it almost killed Podcast Jesus. <clears throat> Is Sorry, that, I, I was thinking of uh, the song Heartbreaker. I think Heart's yes. a different group. Um, yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> Kirk was just an absolute trooper coming back and forth to the studio throughout the day, uh, late at night, early in the morning. Uh, didn't matter. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that he, he wasn't feeling great. Um, I think a lot of us were kind of feeling like ass after everything as well. Uh, but, you know, he was grinding it out with us. So, you know, he took some of the... Uh, the shrapnel of doing a stream like that, you know, just I, I know my stomach was in shambles as well. Yeah, you could um, tell Tuesday yeah. night that like Kirk was like something was off. Like he he was yeah he was sure. starting he was coming down with something. He wasn't sick yet, but like he was in the process of getting sick. Definitely, yeah. I mean, who knows? I I tend to want to blame mixed blankets. Yeah, people have said that like Mick <laughs> like put smallpox on the blankets he gave us because it smells like weed slash dog. I don't know what to do they're just stuck in another room here yeah um uh i would just wait for mick to come to grab them because i don't want to like i know ho ho just in your car blah blah, blah this is disgusting haha ha. but like i don't want to put them in my car because i don't like my car smelling like weed or like dog it's weird it's it's the exact smell that you would expect gus to have but yes <laughs> instead yeah. of, it, was, mick it was and gus mixed. are the same person <laughs> i guess so i mean what else would be their similarities uh they're both like just Crazy, crazy yeah, people. Fair. Um, but but yeah, no, I, I would say like uh, sneaky like big MVP of the uh of the whole stream uh that happened though was everyone who came in, like Tim and Canton coming in, Mick coming in, Pat Ford coming in, Otsella driving from New York. Crazy. It was just insane. Uh all the Minifan fan support and just everyone who just who just watched it. It was just it's just one of these things that is just absolutely fucking insane. Yeah, I, I think two points from just this first little bit so far. Um I think that's one of the wilder parts of this stream was the fact that uh we didn't know it was going to be happen it a lot of times with all the other barstool streams like there's planning uh, apparently with clemmers there was like 20 people in a room or 20 whatever. people for three months yeah planned all this it planned all this like this was spur of the moment like i came into work on a monday morning not expecting to be here for the next you know nearly 40 hours like i all i had were the clothes on my back and whatever else you know i brought in here for a normal show um and then outside of that, yeah, there there was a lot of MVPs of of this stream. Uh, first and foremost, Kirk, obviously, just powering through. Well, just coming up with the idea, and, and like I, I've seen some people and in, like insinuate that Kirk, you know, came up with this idea beforehand, right. To try to take away from Clemmer's stream, and now like not at all. Like Kirk yeah, no. promoted Clemmer's stream. This is something that came up organically. Like this was definitely not something that Kirk sat down and was like, "I'm going to have Coleman in the top ten home run hitters." He, I think it just happened. I forget exactly how it happened. But I think Mike brought up Barry Bonds somehow, and then we got into that list. And then, like, obviously, when sports people come up, Kirk just goes, Coleman, 
Exactly. Yeah. Do you know this? Especially when it comes to baseball. Yeah. He just didn't know. And so I think and then Kirk was like, oh, this would be golden. I think originally he probably was like, oh, we'll just do this for a little bit and then uh, then move on. But then when like you were just stumped, he was like, oh. At one point he goes, this is what you guys, you guys aren't leaving this room. Yeah, this you guys is aren't life now. This. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is your life until you, until you figure this out. So we, we did, we went through that. But yeah, it was definitely not, and, and I don't think it really took away from like Clemmer's stream. If anything, no. it's like, it's like a Barbenheimer sort of thing where it's kind of <laughs> like, no, no, I'm, I'm serious yeah, yeah, when yeah. I say this. Like people, people think like competition is like a good thing when these things are going on because then people are like, oh, did you see? Oh, let me switch back from Coleman stream. Oh, oh, now let me go to Clemmer stream. Oh, he's sleeping. Let me go back to Coleman stream a couple hours later. Oh, he's, you know, Mike's back. Oh, let me go back to Clemmer stream. Clemmer's still sleeping again. Um, <laughs> and like, you know, all these other things. And like, so it kind of like competition like breeds like success. Yeah. And not, not to mention uh, after ours was done, there was also the Jerry After Dark stream like that night too. Yeah. So there was this weird like trifecta of streams uh, all going on within that span. So yeah, it, it's definitely interesting. I, I didn't even really know much about Clemmer's stream outside of what you were pumping in, which was essentially just him continuously sleeping. Um, but yeah, but real quick, just uh, back to some of the other MVPs though. Kirk, obviously, like I said, uh, Mike was but Mike. Mike was he was above and beyond. I, I Mike was it, amazing. It consumed him more than any any hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I actually, it was the day he came in. I think the final day that morning, and he gave his fiery pump up speech to me, and he gave like the whole They're uh, laughing at you. The, yeah, but not even that. Just like Tuesday has been canceled. Like all yeah, that he was canceling. Work. I actually like felt bad about that. Like I I know it, like it was probably kind of joking to an extent but like i actually started to feel kind of bad for uh you know pushing back mike's content or whatever so i definitely was determined that day to try and get it as best as possible between mike going off big cat calling in um it was just like random moments like that i was like damn like i really just i really want to finish out here um outside of mike uh you were phenomenal um just hanging around the whole time, making sure the stream was running. You know, I couldn't be back here. So really from a tech perspective, you were just manning that whole ship. That was amazing. Yeah, that's uh, right. The bedtime stories and everything. Bedtime stories was a highlight for me. Uh, the like random food stories that you were reading. Yeah. I, I was just like going in and out of consciousness and, and hearing these things. It was, it was really funny. Um, One of my favorite parts of, of this whole event too, is that is I was thinking the other day when I was driving home, uh, thinking about the guy who, uh, is like 58 years old, you know, his other friends aren't really into the miniverse. They don't, they, like, he just kind of listens like by himself. He right. probably lives in uh, like Pennsylvania somewhere and he just refreshes his podcast feed and he sees eight new episodes <laughs> of the Kirkman and show. Yeah. Each five hours long and he clicks on it. And it's just, you just going, uh, Arnold Swanson. <laughs> nope. Samsonite. Yeah, it's just like it's just funny just to just to see that and like see how it came came to be. I think a, uh, <clears throat> I mean, if you want to do the whole journey and listen to me, you know, ramble through names or whatever, have at it. But I think the real interesting episode in it all is that first initial like actual show into how we got there. Like that is, I think, a really really interesting episode that like in a couple years time to go back and listen to will be like really funny. Uh, to see how we devolved into that madness, really. Yeah. So, any any other thoughts on the uh, on that stream? Um, I I kind of said it the other day, but just going back and kind of catching moments because I was effectively just like delirious the entire time yeah. after a certain point. But like, there were names that I would I, I saw that I had said that uh, I just did not remember in the slightest. Like, I I remember Jim Cyborg, but like uh, Mick Marks, where I basically just said Mick's name it was really funny. Uh, Jim Machine was another one that mm. I didn't really remember. Uh, just like moments like that were were really funny after the fact, and and hearing uh, both Kirk and Andrea uh, Tommy both say Jim, and and Kirk saying Jim Tommy like the full name just straight up, just yep, saying it. Just like seeing that after the fact was just crushing. I was like, you gotta be kidding me! How did I not see this in the moment? But yeah, it, it was something wild and. Uh, I think it was really cool to just kind of hang around with, with fans, with the guys in here and uh, talk ball, talk baseball as, uh, you know, opening day comes up soon. Yeah, this was the most – there are so many things that you could say is the Kirk Minahan show. Like you could say like going after 
you know, hypocrisy in the media, going after uh, the globe, people who have tried to cancel people, uh, you know, calling out uh, media people who say dumb things, uh, you know, getting on, like, Cullen for false reporting. All these things yeah. are are what makes the Kirk Minahan show great. Um, one of my favorite parts of the Kirk Minahan show is the silly things, like having someone name, uh, like, this is this is just Kirk Minahan show to a T. Like Kirk said, he's like, yeah, when he had Kelleher in here eating hot dogs in a hot dog Right. Uh, contest. Like, oh, yeah. It's like everyone has their, like, favorite parts of the Kirk Minahan show, and, and things like this just really is, is one of my favorite, favorite parts. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, moving on from that. So, obviously, uh, stream ends Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, there's no show. We're just kind of, you know, getting everything together. Yep. Kirk comes in. Supposed to be Ryan Whitney in here in studio on Thursday. And Kirk tweets out, he's actually at urgent care, trying to figure out if it's COVID, strep, what is it? But he feels like absolute dog ass. Yeah. And uh, and uh, at some point, they're going to do the show. But it's not going to be something that is like, like he's, he's doing this because, you know, like it's not going to be a full-fledged Kirk Minahan show. So he gets in here around right. 10.30, goes for about 50 minutes, and just kind of powers through. Um, well, also, it's like, it. it's not like the... Kirk Minahan show was the only thing that he had that day. Like it, it led, oh, no, yeah, it, we'll you get know, to like that. 15 no. minutes into unnamed. And then uh, the Oscar show that dropped as well with Jeff Delo and all them, which was excellent. Uh, if anyone's, if anyone's itching for some, uh, some, some Kirky content, uh, I, I definitely recommend checking out uh, the Oscar prediction show on Jeff Delo's uh, uh, video platforms, um, wherever you watch those. Uh, but yeah, a couple other, couple other things here we can get to uh i i will say so before the unnamed show um we were having some trouble getting uh the zoom him able to see it on the the tv yeah basically the the hdmi, HDMI splitter, was, splitter was, was like wasn't on, connecting yeah. was yeah it was it wasn't working for some reason i thought it was a dud so that's why you saw the uh the the computer in front of kirk and at one point i was like oh here we go again here we go again. This is not good. We fucked up. He's not, this is going to become late. And it's going to be our fault. Um, and I think at one point, Kirk, even before the, the, the show started, he was like, fuck. He's like, oh, this is not good. But uh, I, so we, I think we might have been spared a little bit by the fact that Kirk wasn't feeling great. And he was just trying to be like, okay, I, don't, I really don't want to get into this right now. But I feel like a healthy Kirk would have ripped us to shreds about that. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a buzzer beater finish. Um to at least getting him the computer to be able to see everything, but figured it out, got it back out on the TV like a minute into the show and everything was uh, smooth sailing from there. Um, and then they got into uh, the Clemmer stream. Yeah. Which, which is, which is like all going on right now. Obviously. Right now. Yeah. We're, we're watching it right now. I believe he's, he was just reading his baseball almanac again. Uh, so he, so we really weren't paying much attention to it on Monday and Tuesday for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday comes along, Portnoy pulls it kind of becomes like, everyone's like waiting for the unnamed show to, to come. And, uh, and and Portnoy stuck by like his thing, like, hey, this is just terrible content. Clemmer is sleeping. It's going on today. Uh, by the time this this drops right here, it'll be over. So we'll have seen it. But like Clemmer left at some point. Yeah, uh, he I guess took a step outside of his little curtain or yep. whatever. Um, I thought, and he has said this since, and I kind of remember in some rules or something during this this streaming process or whatever that like he couldn't go downstairs or something. Um, so I thought he was initially fine. Like, I didn't know if I saw the technicality part of it, but then you had brought up that he had mentioned that he saw like a camera guy. Yeah, he shuffle says, away. He says, and like, like I, I didn't see anyone, but I saw a camera guy. Exactly. Like, Chris, these are people too. That, that makes sense because if it is a solitary confinement stream, like you can't see a single person. That's why there's not a chat in there or whatever. Like, even if it's that one person, I think that's more so the technicality than, stepping a foot outside because I thought it was, he had to go down the stairs or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, Kirk was right. Kirk, Kirk said it on the unnamed show. He's like, he's like, he's like, Chris won't get like upset. He's not going to be angry. He's just going to be like, well, you know, it's, it's, it's the company and, and, and yeah. Dave's decision. That was kind of his whole thing. I think the bigger fallout from this is really going to be, uh, the, the stream leaking yesterday. Um, yeah. I'll be interested in seeing it's, it's one of those things where it's like, ah, you wish you had, sometimes you wish you could have like three unnamed shows a week like reacting to things that come from it because that would have been 
excellent. Like I, I feel like Dave would have just absolutely fucking blown up. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that is maybe to their benefit, I guess, is that if like for that to have happened yesterday in the wake of a brand new on name show, like does something else happen in the next week that, you know, supersedes that, you know, Dave seemed very mad about it. And like the full four minute video of him screaming at all three of them uh, is, is really entertaining, honestly. But um, yeah, you just don't know if like, you know, with a, with a Mincy around, you, you don't know what could happen in a week's time where, you know, something is more important, I guess, to Dave. So we'll see. And it, it'll be interesting to see on next week's show. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, yeah. So obviously just the Clemmer stuff going on. Uh, and then kind of like something that was sneaky kind of big yeah, on yesterday's show was uh, was Kirk's just like all in on this Kirk Minahan show network. Yeah. Um, he's poaching people from the Menners Minifan network and things like that. Menners is going a little cuckoo saying, you know, Kirk started this, blah, blah, blah. He, after after apparently in the DMs, Menners said like, hey, it's EEI versus 98.5. Right. Like, I don't know if Menners thought that meant like it's all in good fun because like it wasn't. Yeah, like that, I, d- I didn't know if he meant that or more so like um, anything goes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like so no, no punches held back. Basically. I don't know. It all, it all started. I, I heard Menner's thing earlier today um, where he was talking about like, you know, Kirk through the first battle. Like Menner's saying that Kirk was removed from leadership on the the Kirk Minahan network. Right. It's just fucking ridiculous. It's, I mean, I'd, I'd even argue it was before that when he changed the name of, yeah, that's, of the, that's, the network. that's, yeah. that's insane to me to be able to say that like you are the de facto, if Kirk says something goes up, if Kirk says something doesn't go up, uh, which he almost never does. Um, it, it, it's up to him. Um, so to, to think that you're able to make those decisions without Kirk and, I just keep saying, like, you know, I built this network, blah, blah, blah. Like, like the network was – had a solid base. It did die off for a while um, before Menners brought it back um, and started, like, pushing people to do things again. But, like, there was a time in, like, 2020 and 2021 where, like, there was, like, five shows a week. It was, right. like, me producing it. It was Steve Robinson kind of organizing it and kind of, like, like, like pro- producing it through me. Um, I've watched so much – shit on that network <laughs> Coleman there 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 are there are shows you wouldn't believe existed give, give me like one or two there was a show where it was like a two hour long show where a minifan fan would talk about stocks you should get into but it wasn't like in a joking way it was seriously I remember him talking about there was some electrical chip company based out of Delaware that was like currently at like 17 cents and he thought it had the potential to reach 24 cents at the end of the quarter. And I was like, and I'm just sitting there watching this, like, and, and you could see like the live yeah, yeah, yeah. viewer count. And I think it was two people. So you're telling me I couldn't do a better show than Kelly Keggs and some of those fat losers there. That's right. So, so, but there, there was like a, a solid, like, let, let's stop pretending that Menners made, you know, that first of all, it all comes down to Kirk. Kirk, this was Kirk's right. idea to have Mina fans do these things. So the idea, and and then, and then Menners keeps doing, going on these bipolar things where he's like, he's like, hey, as long as it's great content for the Mina fans, I'm all for it. But then he's also tweeting out that he's taking down lists of people who jump to the other channel and they'll never be allowed back on. Seems like a man flailing right now. And I, I and I do think that that Kirk <clears throat> tweeted out yesterday. Um, someone was like, let me get this straight. Like uh, a Mina fan, like one of your fans <clears throat> has a network yeah. that blah blah blah. And he was like, "Yep, yeah, but he's a sneaky hater of a show. Like, let's just see how I've seen it before. Let's see how the couple of weeks goes. You can you can certainly see, um, like the seeds have been planted. Yesterday, Menace was tweeting about like, oh, don't you think like the the producers should be focused more on Portland because that's going to be an absolute disaster. Menace is just like a jealous person, and yeah. so like he's jealous that he's not able to go to these things. You saw it with Delaware. You saw it with uh with Plymouth." These things happen, and he comes out, and he's like, "Oh, it was a terrible. It was oh, you." He he tries to convince himself that all these things are are terrible because he's not able to. There there are like two different kinds of people with FOMO. There's one who's like, "Oh, I wish I could be there. That looked awesome. That's so funny. Like, oh man, you know." And you kind of bum yourself out a little bit. And then there's the other one who's like, "No, I actually did myself a favor by not engaging in these things." And you're going to see that hardcore with Menners, I think, in the next couple of months. You're going to see him really like saying, "Oh." Uh, the show's not great anymore. They don't talk about what I'd like. I'd like to talk about. You get a little bit of a, 
there's a thing with Kevin from Bristol that happened a couple years ago where, yeah. where, uh, where Kirk was like, you know, Kevin thinks he could, he could be me. You know, you get this with some, I mean, this isn't even a shot of Kevin. I just thought of this as an example. Okay. Um, you get some Minna fans who are like, who see what Kirk does and see what he's created. And you get people who are like, Hey, I think I can become Kirk. I, I can talk for a living. I can become uh, wealthy right. and, and have a career show in here and yes and, 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 and have some people love. talking about it and, and think oh everyone 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 would love me and i can i can do these main shows this is like what you see happening with manners manners thinks he could become kirk he thinks like he thinks him and kirk are it's, it's like what kirk says about mick about how like mick thinks like mick thinks that like kirk sees a younger version of himself yes. like manners manners thinks he is like on the other hemisphere, he is the he is the Kirk Minahan of Australia, right? Which is just not correct. There's one podcast, Jesus. There's one guy who can really create all of this, and so he was like, "Well, what will Kirk do? Oh, Kirk would do this." Well, it's like, "Well, you don't really have the backing. You don't really have the this." And to be frank with you, like I just don't. It, it's 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 like it's not for us to say about like like what we think of the whole network versus uh the show network yeah um to be on our like our our job is to like is to just back kirk no like no matter what are yeah. you familiar with the saying like good soldiers follow orders yep. it's the clone wars thing you know it's uh like, definitely the, yeah. the clones like like just so i i saw some people giving me shit um for spoiling jeopardy when kirk kirk uh kirk asked like what was the result of my my jeopardy thing um, they also kicked you out. Like my job is not to promote Jeopardy or to promote or to make sure that Jeopardy isn't spoiled. My job is to literally do whatever Kirk asks of me when it comes to the right. show. If Kirk tells me to do something, it doesn't matter if I think it's wrong to spoil it. I'm not saying I do. I don't. I'm not saying I don't. It's not it, like if Kirk tells me, "Hey, Justin, what happened here?" and I know it, I need to say it. Good soldiers fall. Like soldiers aren't right. paid to think, to say, hey, to go against what their leader is saying. Like, we just need to, to to get together and be like, hey, Kirk wants to do this? Fine. Manners wants a war? Fine. Uh, like, like this is all it, all in. And like, do I like McFuss Daddy? Yes, I like McFuss Daddy. But it's it's wartime. It's wartime. And, this, and the, the, like, the sad part is, is like, it's brother against brother. McFuss Daddy, me and him, you know, he was in my car for 12 hours. I, you know, have a bomb with the guy. It's just one of those things. Right, yeah, and and I mean, there's not really a lot left in those numbers anyway, to be honest. Like, it's well, it's just and, 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 Ron and, and that's the that's that's the thing where it's just like <laughs> that's the thing where it's just like I just don't understand where like it's like everyone gets so caught up in numbers and 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 manners. It's like who cares if 13 people watch the network stuff or 1,300 people watch? If you're having a good time, like you should only do it if you're having a good time didn't do it to try to become famous or anything like that. I will say I, I did have this thought yesterday, I think. I I do like the idea, and I, I don't really know where he stands on all this, but I do like the idea of Steve from Gloucester remaining with the network and exclusively putting out episodes just attacking Menners. I, I guess. I but mean, Menners is just like low on content anyway for the network that like, I feel like he's not in a position to refuse Steve's podcast, but it would be funny if Steve's inconsistency pod is just him <laughs> going at matters. Yeah. I don't know. The whole thing was just anything else you, uh, you have to say on this, uh, producer show. Let me see. Oh, what's, uh, Oh, we actually got some, some mail. packages, some mail the other day. Let's go. Unboxing time. One says Coleman. I don't know if you want to open this one. Uh, sure. I'll open it. And the other says, Justin, I'll, I'll open I'll open Justin while you come in here. Oh, it's a book. Cleveland rocked the 1995 Indians. The personality. <laughs> it's sluggers. Oh, this, this is awesome. This is awesome. Oh, you got Cleveland rocked. The personality sluggers and magic of the 1995 Indians. Forward by Sandy Olimar Jr. and Jim Tomey. Holy shit. Look at this. That's, oh, let's see. Where does time go? In 94, the strike hit. We were good. I don't know where we would have ended up in 94, but we knew we had something special. 
I think the stripe kicked our team very hungry, focused, and ready to go in 95. And we showed it on the way we played. Offensively, we, we had <laughs> tremendous light up from top to bottom. Banger. We had speed, we had power, we had youth, we had veteran pitching. Jim told me what the forward for this. Absolute awesome. banger. Thank you to, to whoever uh, sent this. Maybe I'll maybe I'll read that. What what is what is that? What did you get? Get it ready. Hang on. <laughs> this is good. I can't see that. What is it? We got a pink New York Nank- Yankees cap. Oh, I love that. It's actually, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of fire. Love that. It's Take giving that. like a little like uh, Timmy Turner vibes. I kind of like it. I'll wear this. This is actually like dope. I, I kind of like this. Thank you. Shout out whoever got this. Awesome. Cap for a true fan. Perfect. Uh, is there anything anything else? Uh, how did that end last year? Oh, what was one story from this week that like, you know, Kirk would give, give, give two shits about? Um, I was... About? I was kind of following this. I, I'm not sure the whole story of it yet, but um, I saw J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, um, had a, I think it Sex was... Sex change. No, 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 no. Uh, so it was India Willoughby. Let me find this. Uh, she apparent, Apparently, J.K. Rowling misgendered uh, British TV personality India Willoughby. Um, and so I believe she reported her. Yeah, she reported J.K. Rowling to the police for what she said, basically. So I don't believe J.K. Rowling could be arrested for, for saying that. Um, I'm trying to see exactly what she said. She said, India didn't become a woman. India is cosplaying a misogynistic male fantasy of what a woman is. You become like Mr. Right Wing this past week. I don't know. Well, no, I'm going to defend my, you know, favorite author of all time. Like, I... Like, J.K. Rowling has some takes about trans people, and, you know, she it's it's a tough spot because it's like, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree, but hey, if whatever makes you happy makes you happy, live your life, whatever. But, yeah, J.K. Rowling, like, coming under fire for, uh, you know, just expressing her beliefs like this is is absurd. Like, I, I she's someone that made uh, Albus Dumbledore, like, gay, technically, in her stories and everything. But, like, I guess this is just an issue that she vehemently disagrees with. And people seem to struggle with like the whole thing with um, when Hogwarts Legacy came out this past year, like there were literally a crazy amount of gaming fans that were uh, boycotting this game strictly because of J.K. Rowling's viewpoints on um, trans people. And um, I think it was left out of like a bunch of like game of the year, like awards and stuff. So I, I don't know. I, I tend to want to support J.K. Rowling. She made my childhood fucking amazing. So I, I stand with J.K preach uh the one one story is uh there's there's been some talk about how uh the current uh generation of xbox might be the the last um and that makes me sad wait really yeah they've, they've been talking about uh like whether or not like there's a future of hardware for xbox or if they go to like just cloud gaming and that makes me that makes me sad uh i can honestly see that because like with uh game pass or whatever like the- it just it just hurts because like i don't know like I, I grew up playing like xboxes and stuff like that and i was always an xbox guy so it kind of breaks my heart a little bit but that's he- neither here nor there uh maybe that won't come but uh Anything else? Uh, I might have a couple more things planned this weekend. I do think I might be coming down with some of my something. My voice sounds a little strange. Yeah, I I say like I mentioned this on the show as well, but like I, my stomach has just been in shambles like since that stream. I don't know what I ate. I'd like to think it was either the blankets or maybe the Dr Pepper uh, peep that that I got down. But uh, yeah, the, my stomach. I, I've been back and forth to the bathroom like all day every day since. So I'm hoping that kind of goes away. As I'm eating a. Uh, a Justin, I got a Justin right, yeah, right we, here. Yeah, I'll we, take we, a we got some Subway beforehand. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, just a wild week, just a great week. Who knows what? Who knows what's coming next? We got a whole bunch of stuff mm. planned next week. We got Milton's. We got oh, like I think Kirk said Whitney and Steve are back in next week. Right. Uh, I'm it, not it, entirely I sure about that, but we'll see. Yeah, it's it sounded like some of those shows from this past week maybe are just getting pushed um, to this week instead. Um, one more thing, outside of this Clemmer stream this morning. Uh, Frank the Tank was, just went off on uh, NJ Transit okay. uh, talking to like their I, I guess they held like a town council type thing to hear from disgruntled people. 
um, watch the video. It's fucking awesome. Like Kent just goes in on them. And as someone who rode NJ Transit into New York every day for like a year and a half, two years, uh, he's 100% right. Uh, everything about that organization and system sucks. So I stand with Frank as well. Perfect. Okay, uh, thank you to Kirk uh, for a great week. And uh, thank you for allowing us to do this. And we will uh, talk to you later. Shout out Jim Tommy. Bye.